This is the nature of things. Monsoon is a vast weather system that comes to India every year. Yes, we are declaring monsoon. <laughs> Some call it the greatest show on earth. But it can turn on a dime from blessing to curse. Some call it life itself. So the one so in a sense brings not only water, it brings life to India. So the one is the soul of the country. often fear extreme weather, but in India, despite the probability of flooding and loss of life, the arrival of monsoon is celebrated. It's the main source of fresh water for millions of people. But for scientists, predicting the arrival and the intensity of the monsoon is an annual challenge. May 20th, two weeks to onset. Throughout India, people are preparing for the monsoon's arrival. Nowhere more so than here in the Kerala backwaters. People here live and farm rice behind a network of levees two meters below sea level. The Indian Meteorological Department is predicting a normal monsoon this year. Though in India, a normal monsoon is often a series of abnormal events. Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine. People like the Prasad family mark the years by the levels of the floodwaters brought on by the monsoon. <laughs> Akila Prasad was still in her mother's womb the last time floodwaters breached the family home. For her, monsoon is a time of romance and enchantment. She's looking forward to its arrival. The Indian Meteorological Department has over 550 stations and observatories throughout India. The Trivandrum Observatory is the southernmost. Okay. When monsoon arrives, it will make landfall here. Scientists here are tracking upper atmosphere conditions in an effort to predict the arrival and behavior of the monsoon. Monsoon season arrives at the end of summer in India as the overheated landmass draws in moisture-laden clouds from the surrounding oceans. They rise, release energy, and create the vast weather system that is monsoon. The monsoon means reversal of the winds, but winds are uh, caused by pressure difference, and pressure difference is caused by thermal difference and thermal difference is caused by the movement of sun. So everything is interrelated, but genesis is from the energy and the transport of energy. And transport of energy is through wind, which leads to conditions which cause either rain or no rain. Ah. 
rain or no rain, the stakes are high in India. The monsoon has bypassed this part of Maharashtra for the past three years. The surrounding villages are ghost towns as villagers have fled with their cattle seeking water. They've come to camps like this where the government provides them with food and water. India's history of drought, flood, feast and famine is contained within these records at the Indian Meteorological Department headquarters in Pune. IMD was established by the British in 1875, reflecting their understanding that predicting the monsoon is the key to governing India. As Director General of IMD, Dr. Ranjan Kelkar used to predict the monsoon. Since retiring, he's devoted himself to contemplating its deeper meaning. All the water that we need to drink to raise our crops, there's only one single source, which is the monsoon. So the monsoon, I should say, brings not only water, it brings life to India. And when you talk of life, of India, it means that it's its soul. So the monsoon, in a sense, is the soul of the country. Monsoon clouds roll in off the Arabian Sea and rise up through the Ghat Mountains in Kerala. Throughout the region, rice farmers are readying their fields. They rely on a combination of IMD reports and traditional knowledge to decide when to plant their seeds. Life revolves around water in Kerala, and water management is the key to survival. All farming is monsoon dependent here. Farmers have to know when to drain their fields, when to plant, when to apply fertilizer, when to irrigate. All these things depend upon the arrival of the rains. Onset is just days away now. Atmospheric changes, heat, humidity, high pressure, are bringing the whole biosphere to life. The rice is up and needs rain. Data from the 14 stations in Kerala is gathered and mapped out here in Trivandrum. The monsoon trough has been stalled at the Andaman Islands, 200 kilometers south of here. It appears to be on the move again. This is the northern limit of monsoon. This is the, everything uh, Director Sub might have explained. Eh? It's, uh, it's moving like this. The Every green, time we will update. The green line. Yeah, this green line. And when it goes, it will move like this? Yes. And uh, now all eyes are set on it, and it is expected that uh, maybe next three to four days conditions would become favorable for uh, onset of monsoon or Kerala. Goa is just up the coast from Kerala. These fishermen are preparing for the off season. Arrival of the monsoon marks the end of the fishing season in Goa. Offshore storms make seafaring too dangerous, and it's breeding season for the fish. These net boats are too destructive of the spawning habitat and are banned from fishing. For these fishermen, 
Monsoon marks the beginning of hungry times. The Met Office hasn't announced it yet, but here in the backwaters, there's little doubt. Monsoon is just hours away now. All eyes are on the Indian Meteorological Department in Trivandrum. Their onset announcement will mark the beginning of the monsoon season. It's been said that the whole Indian economy is a bet on the monsoon. Every sector is waiting for the announcement. Hello. Yes, it is monsoonish. Yes, it is monsoonish. We have to advance today itself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That, that uh, you have to decide whether we can forego that for one day. Because today, very heavy, heavy to very heavy rainfall, and some stations reported except you have seen that. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Okay. Santosh is ready to call it, but Delhi isn't convinced. It's raining heavily throughout Kerala, but official onset is determined through a complex set of metrics involving rainfall, wind speed, temperature, and barometric conditions. Two of Kerala's 14 stations Hello? haven't met all the criteria yet. Uh, sir, only those two stations. That means eight out of 14 only. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, we are declaring one soon. Monsoon begins its journey north. In a normal year, it will take four to six weeks to cover all of India. Mumbai has been waiting anxiously. Six days and 1,200 kilometers after onset in Kerala, monsoon arrives in Mumbai. Monsoon is the season of love in India. Nowhere more so than in Bollywood. Monsoon is a staple of Indian cinema. 
and you'd be hard pressed to find a Hindi film without a wet sari scene. One of the classics is Mansil, one of the first Bollywood pictures shot off the lot on location in downtown Bombay. It stars a young Mushmi Chatterjee and Amitabh Bachchan in the film that launched their careers. Then see the God created monsoon, it come every year. The rain come, the romance begin, the romantic song takes you some another world. Monsoon and love. Why is monsoon and love always associated together? What is it? Love is, I think, it's a, it's a creative of emotions, you know. And monsoon, the rain, is it, I think, a uh, force to earth to create things, you know. The greenery and the kind of life which is God created after this rainfall, you know, the earth gave a birth to so many things so i think is love also is offer so many things and there's so many kind of love so it's like a raindrop you know normally it takes four to five weeks for the monsoon to cover all of india almost 5 million square kilometers. This year, it does it in 16 days, the first time in recorded history. But the monsoon is a chaotic system, and not all parts of India will receive rain. Mayorish Prebune is a science journalist assigned to cover the monsoon for Maharashtra's largest daily newspaper. He's just returned from the drought region, a hundred kilometers east of here. The winds are there, clouds are there, fog is there, raining, and this is monsoon. It's moving towards east, the inner part of Maharashtra. I hope some drops are also going to that drought region. not to fill their wells. Just to give them a ray of hope. Winds are still blowing dry here. These people came here expecting to be away from home for only a few weeks. That was three years ago. If it doesn't rain soon, it will be four. With the stakes so high, predicting the monsoon is the holy grail of Indian science. In 1962, the Indian government recruited some of the country's top scientists and established the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. Their mission to study the science behind the monsoon in order to more accurately predict it. Unlike the Met Office, which relies on statistical data, IITM uses only raw data as a basis for modeling the weather. They're working at the outer edges of math and physics to unravel the mystery of the rain they've come here to enjoy. So me, where, where are we? We are in Mahabaleshwar. <laughs> Cloud Physics Laboratory in Mahabaleshwar. It is the, uh, the unique observatory uh, of 
um, Ministry of Earth Sciences and uh, it is operated by Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. And what are we in the middle of? We are in the middle of the precious rain, <laughs> the precious monsoon rain. But is, this, is this normal rain or is this a cloud? We are in the cloud. <laughs> This is a normal rain. It's a normal, yeah. typical monsoon rain. Uh, so this is a site where you get almost uh, eight meter a year, six to eight meter average rainfall here. Uh -huh. So the another advantage of this site is we can get monsoon clouds close to surface, uh, so that we can monitor uh, cloud microphysics. They're studying cloud microphysics, photographing raindrops penetrating clouds with Doppler radar. Their objective is to formulate mathematical models that will predict the behavior of monsoon clouds over time and space. This is where the clouds meet chaos theory. To model the clouds, IITM has a supercomputer capable of performing 524 trillion calculations per second. But the equations rely on data gathered in a chaotic, tropical environment. In the tropics, we have these instabilities associated with clouds called convective instabilities. These instabilities are very fast. Therefore, the growth rate of errors, if I have a small error, they will grow with this instability and they will quickly become very large. Uh, whereas in the middle latitude, it's a different system. And they are governed by what we call hydrodynamic instabilities. Their time scale is a little slower. So even if you have a small error, it will grow a little slowly, and you still have some uh, uh, scope for uh, prediction. So that makes uh, our tropical atmosphere more difficult to predict. What goes inside a cloud? Millions and millions of component particles millions or billions of water drops, each drop different from the others out of that billion. To model that uh, collection of a cloud and to say that from those billions of particles, this much rain will fall down on this place at this time is something that is a real mystery. It's been two months since onset. And this place should be underwater by now. Kazaranga Park is situated on the floodplain of the Brahmaputra River, named after Brahma, the creator. But Assam is rain deficient so far this year. Utam Saikya is the honorary wildlife warden at Kaziranga, and he's anxious for rain. Uh, this is the southern direction of Kaziranga National Park. These are the cloud, monsoon cloud. They are coming towards the north and hit the back to the Himalayan range, and then rain start. And after the rains, the Brahmaputra Valley flood. And when the Brahmaputra Valley floods? The Kajiranga National Park also flood. The uh, uh, surplus water of Brahmaputra entered the Kajiranga National Park, and the whole national park is flood. Kaziranga is a World Heritage Site, so designated for its biodiversity. It relies on the annual Brahmaputra flood to recharge the grasslands that are home to some of the world's most endangered species. Monsoon mean for Kaziranga um, National Park is a life, you know. It's a life. Without monsoon, without water, Kajiranga cannot survive. So it's always wait for heavy rain and flood and monsoon. So, uh, so far I used to say the monsoon means the life of Kajiranga National Park. There are only 3,000 Indian rhinoceros left on the planet. Half of them live in Kaziranga. <laughs> Take care, take care. I'm very much scared about, um, maybe he can charge us. We don't have the guard with us. 
So we need to blank fire out any make to any metallic sound, otherwise he will come again. What do you think when you're standing here listening to the, all these sounds? I am thinking about the uh, safeguard of these cases, the innocent rhino. They are uh, now in the trouble. So that's why I am thinking about how to give the safeguard of this rhino. When the flood comes, the animals flee to higher ground, where they're vulnerable to poachers. One rhinoceros horn, ground up and sold as aphrodisiac, is worth over a hundred thousand dollars across the border in China. With the flood approaching, poachers have already been spotted across the river, recruiting guides among the tribal community. Utam Saikia has camera traps set up along the migratory route to track the movement of the animals and of the poachers. In Kaziranga, poachers aren't the only ones who shoot to kill. These uh, are the poachers kill in encounter inside Kaziranga National Park. And the arms recovered from them, from the spot. This is the most wanted one. His name was Noren Pegu. He was, uh, he was a headache of forest department. Finally, he was killed inside uh, Ogaratoli Range, Eastern Range of Kajiranga. It's raining upriver at the base of the Himalayan range. The Brahmaputra flood is coming, and the animals are on the move. The Brahmaputra flood came late in the season, but it came. Not as big a flood as last year, when this whole village was underwater. But it's enough to renew the floodplain. The animals are on the move. Throughout the park, rangers and volunteers organized by Utam are on the lookout for migrating animals. This is the time of their greatest vulnerability. Do, do all the creatures, do all the animals migrate when the park floods? Yeah, most of the animal. They believe that they will take shelter in that hill area. So they used to go towards the hill, Carby are long hills. It's not just poachers that threaten the animals. To get to high ground, the animals have to cross one of Assam's busiest trucking arteries. Utam has received word of a rhino and calf trying to cross. Where are we going? We are going to National Highway because the animal is migrating towards the Kar Long Hills. So we have to give the safe passes for those wild animals. Otherwise, the traffic will hit and kill the animal in National Highway 37. <laughs> Two rhino, they're no, grazing no. in the night. Actually, they are coming. They are coming to cross the highway. A very small calf, newborn. Monsoon marked the end of summer holidays, 
and Akela is back in school. It hasn't stopped raining here since onset. More rain has fallen in this period than any time in recorded history. Water levels throughout the backwaters keep rising and the levees are barely holding. the backwaters, communities are shoring up their levees. The water hasn't been this high in over a decade, and thousands of homes are at stake. A breach like this can be catastrophic if it's not brought under control. They repair the levee, but the whole system is at a breaking point and can't handle any more rain. But the weather report is not promising. Satellite images show the monsoon trough sitting right over this region. This is the first rupture of many throughout the backwaters today. It's not about averting disaster anymore, but of saving what can be saved. It's not just Akila's family. Levees ruptured throughout the backwaters last night, leaving 30,000 homeless. These people are taking their children to live with relatives. Some will never return home. Meghalaya means place of the clouds. This is the end of the journey for the monsoon. 
where the clouds come to die. The Himalayan mountain range is just north of here. Rainwaters from these mountains will swell the rivers and flood the Bangladesh plain below, renewing the floodplain and creating another cycle of life. If monsoon is the soul of India, Jarapunji is its spiritual capital. Every Indian schoolchild knows that this is the rainiest place on earth, receiving over 10 meters of rain in a typical monsoon season. A Met Office employee here has recorded atmospheric conditions for over a century and sent them to headquarters in triplicate. The technology hasn't changed much. During Raj, the Cherapunji Met Office was considered a hardship posting, the constant rain proving too much for even an Englishman, driving many of them to drink or worse. When the British were here, yes. during Raj period, yes. this was, they called this the suicide posting. <laughs> It might be, sir, <laughs> because at that time, I think this, this area is the most isolated place, I think, at that, at that time. This rainwater will swell the rivers, flood the plains, return to sea, join currents that will circle the earth and return eight months later as monsoon clouds. Destruction gives way to creation. Crops are harvested, festivals are celebrated, and preparations are made for the next monsoon. There will be no crops or festivals in the Maharashtra drought region this year. It still hasn't rained. That's four years in a row the monsoon has failed these farmers. With accelerating climate change, we'll likely see a lot more of these landscapes. The wells are dry, loans are coming due, and hope is fading. He has a six acre farm here. It's totally burnt. All plants are burnt. Just because of no monsoon. Both of his uh, colleagues has to be migrated. Because they don't, he, he can't give him them uh, work. And there is no water. There were some suicides in another taluka just uh, because of uh, loan on them and it's uh, increasing each day and that's why because of no rain the suicides at Akila's village it took a week for the floodwaters to settle. Most of the houses are ruined. Akila and her sister are back. They're camping with 12 other families down the canal from their house. Miraculously, it is still standing.
ഇരവിലും ഭയങ്കര ഇരവിലും പേടി അപ്പൊക്കെ ഞങ്ങൾ വെളിയിലേക്ക് ചാടുക ണെങ്കിൽ ഭയങ്കര നിർബന്ധം അവിടെ അടയ്ക്കാത്തിരിക്കേണ്ട വീട് പോവും അതുകൊണ്ട് എല്ലാം ഉപേക്ഷിച്ച് പുറത്തിറങ്ങി നിൽക്കാനായിട്ട് ആകെ ഒരു എന്താ അവസ്ഥയെന്ന് പറയാൻ പറ്റില്ല അന്നത്തെ അവസ്ഥ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഒരു ശിവരാത്രിയാണോ എന്താണ് ആ ഒരു അവസ്ഥയായിരുന്നു നമുക്ക് വേറെ പോയാൽ അങ്ങനെയുള്ള ഒരു അവസ്ഥയിലല്ല ഇവിടെ ജീവിക്കാൻ സുഖമാണ് നമുക്ക് ഇങ്ങനെ ഒരു സീസൺ വരുമ്പോഴുള്ള ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടേ ഉള്ളൂ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ജീവിതത്തിനെല്ലാം കൊണ്ട് നമുക്ക് അനുയോജ്യമായൊരു സാധാരണക്കാർക്ക് പറ്റിയൊരു ജീവിതം അവിടെ ഇവിടെ കിട്ടുന്നു എനിക്ക് ഈ നാട്ടിൽ നിന്ന് ആദ്യം മാറണ എനിക്ക് ഈ നാട് വളരെ പേടിയാണ് അതുകൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ ആദ്യം തന്നെ ഈ നാട്ടിൽ നിന്ന് ഇവിടെ മാറിയിട്ട് വേറെ വീട് വെക്കും പിന്നെ അച്ഛനെ അങ്ങനെ നോക്കും The flood waters will recede in about a month. The prasads will rebuild and replant. Akila will go back to school. She wants to become a nurse. Next year, maybe the monsoon will be kinder. We're in Meghalaya, overlooking Bangladesh. Dr. Kelkar has come to see the monsoon clouds roll across the Bangla plain. Having devoted his life to unraveling the mysteries of the monsoon, he's come here as a pilgrim, contemplating mortality. There's total quietness all around. A sense of tranquility. Something more than just ordinary peace, which means a lack of sound. It's not that. This is serenity in the whole scenario. It takes you out of this world somewhere else. But every cloud has its own shade of gray. There are black clouds, there are white clouds. There are clouds of different thickness. Clouds which scare you but don't give you rain. clouds which look benign but give you a lot of rain it's a moment i cherish something to preserve and remember I just finished watching Orange is the New Black. Breaking Bad. Dexter. How serialized shows are changing television. A TV renaissance on Doc Zone. Next on CBC. Why are we inside a giant vault? To help you save money and keep it safe. With tips on how to ask the right questions so you're not stuck paying more than you should. Find out how to stash your cash. On Marketplace, Friday at 8 on CBC. Missed your favorite CBC show? Catch up now at cbc.ca.